We just concluded the lame duck session in the legislature. And as a point of personal privilege, I wanted to take the opportunity, because it's not often that I have a gavel in my hand, But I view this not only as an opportunity, but also as my duty to speak for so many people whose voices were shut out and shut down in recent weeks here at the Capitol. As I stand before this body today, I am reminded that today's meeting of the Electoral College is more than just a ceremonial vote. It's an affirmative, it's affirmation of the will of the people of Michigan, as evidenced by the fact that we are here to cast all 16 votes for President Barack Obama, we know that Michigan is a state that believes in opportunity and embraces a vision for our state and for our nation that looks forward, not one that focuses on an extreme ideological agenda. Yet last week, in this very chamber in which you sit, we saw one of the most extreme and overtly political agendas in Michigan's history, rushed through under the cover of night without any, without any public input, action that goes against everything that our democracy stands for and what our people are asking for. There was no mandate for what took place here last week only outrage after it was discovered what was happening. Special interests got their way, while the people of Michigan got locked out of the building, literally. Even today, I have Republican colleagues in the House who are announcing that they want to change how this system, today's system of electoral votes, works. Because that's what we've seen. When they don't like an outcome, they try to change the rules and to step out and try to rig the system for electing a president of the United States is wrong. It's just one more effort to undo the will of the people and ignore what the people are calling for. We began this legislative session in January 2011 with hope and promise of bipartisanship. And yet, that hope quickly turned into hopelessness as the governor turned out to be anything but the tough nerd we were promised. To that, I asked the governor, what's happened to relentless positive action? After last week, it appears that it was just rhetoric. So as we stand here today, we want to focus on hope again and to look forward to rebuilding America under President Obama's leadership. And allow me to talk briefly about the positive action that I believe and that we believe Michigan must now take. We believe that we can turn Michigan around by reinvesting in what makes us great. And that starts with our kids. My Democratic colleagues and I have put forward a plan called the Michigan 2020 plan that would move Michigan forward to the head of the class by giving each and every high school graduate the opportunity to attend college and have it paid for entirely. It's a plan that economists, educators, parents, and students all agree is the right plan to bring jobs to our state and provide a better future for our next generation. That is what it, moving all of Michigan forward looks like. That's what a plan based on the metrics looks like. How about we put that on our agenda? We believe that we can support our middle class families by creating fair tax policies, not ones that give a handout to the folks at the top. That's really social justice. We can and must grow, not cut, the programs that get our unemployed and underemployed workers retrained and back on their feet so they can find new jobs and no, new opportunities for themselves and their families. That is a turnaround for the people of Michigan. We believe we can open our doors for graduates and young professionals by fostering redevelopment going on in our urban areas 
and creating an atmosphere that they look for when deciding where to work and live and grow their own families. That is a future we can look forward to. We can welcome the gay and transgendered communities here to our state instead of, inve instead of inventing new reasons to let them leave. That is social justice. And we can make it perfectly clear that there are opportunities here in our great state of Michigan that don't exist anywhere else in the world for people, all people, to succeed in their own personal pursuit of happiness. That is how we put the Michigan people on the path to prosperity. And we can do all of these things, but only if we, the people, have the courage and the strength of character to make that happen. I hope that my Republican colleagues use this holiday break ahead of us to think long and hard about what's happened right here in this chamber over the past two years and spend some time talking, but most of their time listening to the people who elected them, to the people that they represent, to the people who pay their salary. They're asking us to be leaders. They're asking us to be bold. They're asking us to make Michigan a place we can be proud of again. I believe, and I know you believe, that we can do better, and we will.